So as I mentioned, I tend to go really deep into one area of collecting and then I get distracted. Squirrel. Well, if you got a dollar, well, just lousy down. Know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget found. Hi, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, well, Trusty Huckster Mercantile is a vintage reseller with a presence primarily on Etsy. Uh, but more recently, I've been also having a presence here on YouTube with some content videos, but also live sales. So every Thursday night at 8 p.m. on this channel, you will find some vintage live sales uh, where I will be selling items that uh, might normally go to Etsy, might normally go to my booth, which I no longer have, and uh, found that YouTube is kind of a fun place to sell them. So. If you haven't already, make sure you join my channel on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern and check out my live sales. Uh, but tonight I am going to talk about not my live sales, and I'm not even really doing a formal haul video. Well, yeah, yeah it's kind of a haul video. But this is a trusty haul video because this is stuff I am keeping for myself. So these are items that I picked up uh, either from eBay or... I think all of these, yeah, all of these did actually come from some online source. So all of these did come to me through the mail, and these are all items that I am keeping for myself. I'm going to start out with a little bit of friend mail, and it actually is related to some of the other objects that I'll be showing uh, today. But I received this from Michelle Decker, who is a uh, one of my customers from the live sales. And uh, she also obviously watches some of my videos because she was uh, noticing, noticed or had paid attention that in the past I have purchased items for my personal collection of Wittenberg University or Wittenberg College items, which is where I graduated from. And so what she found was a uh, postal first issue, postage stamp, of Wittenberg University of Myers Hall. And Myers Hall was actually my freshman dorm. It is the um, original building from the campus, was once considered Old Wittenberg. Uh, and this is a first issue from 1994. So a little bit after I graduated from there. But I do have a lot of Wittenberg ephemera. I'm loving the vintage postcards and items like this. And I did not have a first issue uh, stamp in my collection. So I was really excited to have this. Uh, so thank you very much to Michelle Decker for uh, uh, giving this to me. Very nice to get, receive some friend mail. I also received, probably you really wouldn't consider it friend mail, but I mentioned the live sales that are going on my YouTube channel on Thursdays. The vintage community, if you kind of tripped into this video without knowing anything else, uh, actually is flush with a wide variety of uh, vintage resellers who are all doing uh, some version of a live sale. And I try and jump into them when I can. Uh, sometimes during the day, so it's a little bit harder because this is a side hustle for me, so I actually do have a full-time gig during the day. Uh, but sometimes they're in evenings, and there's one who tends to do late nights, which I like a lot because I'm a little bit of a night owl, and that is Trisha from Sandy and Otto. And I've joined a couple of her sales before, and just for whatever reason, I hadn't really come across anything I had wanted to purchase myself until I came across this. And I'm in the process of redoing a couple of the um, display areas within my own home. Uh, in my living room, I just received, I just purchased a new uh, bookcase etagere, which is gonna hold my glass, some of my glass collection. And I saw this uh, metal uh, dish, little brass dish, got some uh, patina, some age put into it. I just thought it had some really great uh, color uh, for the metal. And because I was going to be putting a lot of glass onto a glass bookcase, I actually wanted to pull some more metals into it. And when I saw this, I thought it'd be perfect. Not exactly sure what I'm going to do with it. It'll probably just sit by itself at this point. I mean, I could put a little candle in there, um, but probably I don't want to really cover that design because I think it's gorgeous. It's a little footed, a little footed tray. So it doesn't really fall under friend mail, although I did, I, I'm my own friend, so I sent it to myself. So I'm, I got my own friend mail. Uh, but this is a purchase from Sandy and Otto. And she included a little card uh, with her purchase. And that's always good. It's amazing to me when I purchase from eBay. Uh, and there'll be a couple that I'll show here uh, for my collection that I picked up. When the seller doesn't actually give credit to where it came from. 
Uh, sometimes it's I want to do a review and I have to go back and figure out which one it was. Or if I want to buy again, I have to you know dig dig through my old orders. So it is nice when a seller includes something so when you open up that box, you know where it came from. I knew where it came from, but all the same, it was nice to have Sandy and Otto include her card. And thank you very much for Trisha. It's going to be great in my collection. So as I mentioned, one of the collections that I build for my own personal enjoyment is uh, collections from Wittenberg University, or most of the ones because I am picking up more antique pieces, uh, Wittenberg College. And uh, one of the you know more inexpensive items to pick up, and they are relatively plentiful, are postcards. So I basically went on a little bender and started buying a bunch of Wittenberg postcards that I did not already have in my collection. I have no problem having multiples of the same building, but I wanna have some variety of the cards that I get. And I even do have some of the same of the exact same postcard, but for whatever reason, there was a range of date uh, in there. So I, you know, I wanted a little bit of variety. Uh, both of these are buildings that I already had. Uh, well, actually, no, this one I had it already in my collection. This is Recitation Hall. I should take them out of the sleeve so they're not shiny. Uh, and none of these are particularly, you know, so rare that they're I, they can't be touched by human hands. But it is Recitation Hall, built in the 1880s. It was my favorite building at Wittenberg. It's now primarily uh, offices, uh, admissions offices, things like that, more of an administrative building. Uh, it's right on the main uh, quad of the campus, and it still looks just like this. Uh, it's an absolutely beautiful condition building, absolutely love it. This postcard is dated 1918. The postmark is actually a little bit hard to see. I couldn't actually see the year, but the card itself on the side, you can see it actually says 18. So that is from 1918 and it does still have the stamp. So one of the things that I've been doing is, uh, because I am growing the collection a little bit, being a little bit more selective. I definitely like them when they're used. Uh, there's all kinds of postcards available that are not used. Uh, this is my preference. And I also want them with the stamp still on them in, in very i can't imagine in any case that the stamp is particularly valuable it's really just more of a way to make it look like a complete collection so i got this one from a buyer i actually got two from the same buyer the recitation hall and then this building actually no longer exists it didn't exist when i was there either uh wittenberg university was tied to the lutheran um church and it had a divinity school uh, seminary uh, located on campus, and this was the original seminary building. It has been torn down, but when they built another building, they gave it some of the same profile. So there's a kind of an, a, an homage to this building, but the building itself does not exist. So this is another one. This one happens to be dated 1909. You can see both the postmark and the date of the postcard both say 09, so... Uh, uh, clear on the reference. What I like about this one, and hopefully you'll be able to see it, and yeah, it looks like it's showing up. It's been tinted in such a way that it's basically a black and white postcard, but it's been tinted to give like a, a pink hue going across the roof line. I'm assuming that's original, but I find that just an interesting way of decorating the building or decorating the illustration or the photograph. So Thought it was kind of cool. I don't think I have any of this building in my collection already, so this was definitely the first one, and it's definitely the first one that has that kind of a, a, a pinkish hue that is um, covering the photo. So these two came from the same seller, but as I mentioned earlier, if you don't include who you are, it's kind of hard for me to give a shout out uh, who I got them from. So they came very nicely packaged in an envelope. They each had a little sleeve, so they were protected. There is a return address, but the return address is the person's name, not their business or eBay number. So I could dig it up online, but at this point, you know, I'm just going to show this is part of my collection. I'm super happy to have them. I tend to find myself going through, um, I don't want to call them ruts because I enjoy being in the rut. I don't know what that says about me, uh, but I tend, I have several, so many different collections that I, every once in a while I'll just kind of start focusing on one collection and start finding items to build up that collection. And then at some point I, you know, kind of, I don't want to say I tire of it, but I'll stop building that and start building something else. So in addition to the two cards that I showed you, I got two more cards. Uh, this one is kind of fun. This one's dated 1910. It's not the best condition. You can see there's definitely some marks and things on the on the um, front. But if you compare this 
to the date of first issue. If you look really closely to that one, you'll see there are columns on the front of the building. This picture does not have those columns. The columns were added in the teens. And so this card is dated 1910 and probably printed, you know, in 1910 or earlier. It was printed during a time when those columns had not yet been built. So I just like this one as a snapshot in time of an era that the building doesn't exist any, it doesn't exist like that anymore. Um, there's also, there's references to this building was once white. Uh, most, every photograph I've ever found, every postcard I've ever found, it's always been of the red. Uh, the uh, college was founded in 1845. So I would probably have to find some pretty old postcards to try and find the white um, building. But I love the, again, the historic buildings. There's there's some that are in the you know war era that I like, and I even have some that are in the 60s because sometimes the photography was somewhat interesting, but I definitely prefer the antique ones. And so this one, you know, it's 110 years old, um, loving it. And even given its condition, I'll probably look far worse when I'm 110. So I was great, really grateful to be able to add this one to my collection. And then I mentioned that there was kind of that weird pink tone on that other uh, uh, postcard. This one also has kind of a weird tone. The building is a pink, does have kind of a pinkish brick, but the roof is not pink. The This has definitely been printed in such a way that it gave much more of a pink tone to that building. It's the original library uh, from Wittenberg. I believe now it's a psychology building, or at least it was a psychology building when I was there. Um, it doesn't really look like this. It's much more attractive. Uh, so this, again, is just one of those. It kind of gave it a, an odd hue, and I'm not sure why they would chose to do that if they did it on purpose. Uh, but this one, again, also is from 1910, has the postmark, and has the stamp. So these two uh, purchased as well. But these I purchased from someone I've actually purchased from before, and it is the Historic Postcard Company. So give them a nice little shout out here because they actually told me who they were. So when I open up the envelope, I actually know exactly what I got. So in total, I have four vintage slash antique postcards for my collection. So as I mentioned, I tend to go really deep into one area of collecting and then I get distracted, squirrel, and I end up focusing on another area of my collection. And, you know, eventually they all start getting touched and added to, but uh, this ended up being a case where at the same time I was kind of in uh, adding the postcards to my personal collection, I also found that I was prepping for a deep dive on another piece of ephemera. And uh, if you're not familiar with my channel, if you're new to my channel, I do deep dives. Uh, Used to do them twice a month. I've been a little bit more sporadic uh, more recently, but I was prepping for a specific one with Joni from Vintageous on cigarette and non-sport trading cards. And it was something that I had started a collection somewhat by accident when I came across them one time. And But to be honest, didn't really know much about them. You know, I, I liked the... Uh, the the designs that I was collecting, I was collecting in a very specific area. I was trying to add to a collection of porcelain and pottery related cards. And there's a uh, wide variety of cigarette cards made around World War One that surprisingly enough were about pottery and porcelain. And then also some non-cigarette cards, like there's one made by a margarine company on how to make porcelain. But Regardless, as I was prepping for the deep dive, I liked to be able to do some research. It ended up being a great interview with Joni. She's very knowledgeable. She had done a lot of research herself, but she is in Canada, so she had access and, and knowledge of some cards that I didn't even know existed. And one of the things I started doing to kind of, again, educate myself a little bit more is build some of the specific gaps in my collection. Now, just like any collection, when you start focusing on picking up a individual one, you know, specific item, things start getting pricey. So this ended up being a very expensive rabbit hole for me to go down. But I did uh, go into eBay, I did go into Etsy, and I found, these were all from the same seller in eBay, I found additional uh, cards from that, the primary porcelain collection that I was adding to. These are all Chairman cigarette cards, uh, R.L. Lee Manchester, so they're all British. And these happen to be second series. So the way the cards were issued, they were kind of issued in sets over a year or two year period. And so you had basically a couple of years to buy as, enough cigarettes to fill an entire series. I think of 50, I think each set was, yeah, each set was 50. 
So, and then they've issued the next set, issued the next set. So this was the second series. So this is obviously second oldest. The first is very hard to come by. I don't think I saw a single one listed on eBay. I do have some, I have some of the firsts. I do definitely have gaps in that collection, but I filled in some of the seconds. And some of these are really just were picked because of the design on the card. These are companies I'm not even necessarily familiar with. This is Chantilly, which I thought was a lace. This one is Mason, which you know just kind of had a really bright Technicolor uh, appearance to it. This one I've got because it was Menace Villaroy. I'm familiar with Villaroy and Bach, so I'm assuming this was the predecessor for it. Narbonne, which I have never heard of, but God, look at the look at the decoration on that plate. And then this is a uh, French uh, Clignancourt. I do not speak French, so I will just show it to you. Uh, anyway. So these were all added to the collection. They ended up being a little bit pricey because when you start doing them one at a time, uh, they add up. But I was able to fill a little bit more, you know, again, see what how rare they were, etc. And then from that same seller, I found another card, which I had to pick up. It's the fourth series, which I have gaps in that series too, uh, but these are a little bit easier to come by. But this one is, as far as I'm concerned, he's a huckster. He is a porcelain rendition by Dresden Porcelain of a tailor. And so he is riding a goat. I do not know why he's riding a goat, but he is wielding a pair of scissors. And I just like the idea of the tradesperson on or off a goat uh, being represented in fine art. So like a huckster, he is a tailor huckster and he has a goat. So this one is fourth, I added that, but I love the idea of adding the huckster because I also found this absolutely amazing set which once again, did not know they existed until you start researching and you know, again, several rabbit holes later, I spent a lot of money. Uh, these are from uh, John Player and Sons. So these are also cigarette cards, they're also around World War I. These are from the series called Cries of London. Now, doing a little bit more research, it appears that this Cries of London series was done in prints, it was done in plates, uh, I think uh, Katie from Vintage and Vinyl, she showed in one of her home uh, her home tours. I think she either has plates or tiles that were done with this look. So I don't know how many overall Cries of London were done. Like, I don't know if this was originally part of a book or where, like what that original set was made for, but these were put into the cards and they're just, they're fascinating. Um, for some reason, these don't, don't want to, they don't want to zoom in as well because I'm back here. Uh, so I might just, I might take some photos of these and, and put them in just so you can get a better idea of what they have to offer. A lot of them are food sellers. And to be honest, from the huckster milieu, I am not particularly interested in hucksters that sell food. I am more interested in hucksters that sell like what I sell, you know, decorative items or household goods or snake oil. You never know. So, uh, but, so I've got this set. These are definitely going to go into, I have a Huckster collection. I will actually highlight that at some point as, you know, just one of my personal collections of uh, different Huckster licenses. I mean, just, there's, there's a lot of stuff out there uh, about, you know, that are basically tied to the Huckster world. And, um, you know, so the food ones are less uh, interesting to me, but things like this one selling baskets, I like that one a lot. Let me cover my face, zoom in on him. So you've got the baskets one, and then my personal favorite, because I like them as a as an item, this guy is selling band boxes, and I think band boxes are fun. I only have one, and it's a reproduction, but I think band boxes are awesome. Um, so I find those, I find those two. Those are definitely gonna get framed, but we've got Dust Ho, and uh, the Chimney Sweep, Bellows to Mend, lavender for sale. So there's definitely some that are not food related. Um, so I'm gonna figure out how to frame them. I do because they have the information on the back as well. I have a frame that is open on both front and back. So I think I might be able to put most, if not all of them in there. There's one that's adver that's promoting cat and dog meat. That one may get lost, just saying. Um, but for the rest of them, I think that was really cool. And so when I also saw that Dresden that represented basically a huckster in porcelain, you know, he'll probably get framed as part of my huckster collection as opposed to part of my porcelain cigarette card selection. Um, 
the Huckster cards came from Leslie Curtis, and they came from England. Uh, so these were, because again, that's where they originated. You know, they're a little bit more plentiful over there. Um, so when you're dealing with things like that, you're not only paying for the individual item, you're paying for it to ship over here. But I give her full credit, uh, Leslie Curtis, I'm going to give her full credit, and I'm assuming it's a her, but it could be a him, um, because they were packaged extremely well. It came in a little envelope. It had this like kind of cool plastic dividery thing um, that had then the cards that I purchased taped to it. So these were all sealed together. And then there was another collection that I was also building, and that one is from Ogden Cigarettes. I literally only have one. Um, and when I saw this one, I thought it was beautiful. So I went ahead and bought a second one because this because this series is really expensive. You know, not really, not like a car or anything, but for a little tiny trading card, it can get a little expensive. So I threw that into the mix because I like the color. And, you know, eventually I'll, I'll, I'll want to finish this Ogden cigarette series as well. But the other thing, which I didn't know existed, uh, so I actually, if, I, if I'm doing this in chronological order, this must have happened after the deep dive because during the deep dive, Joni started talking about cigarette silks. I never heard of such a thing and I'd never come across them. And so as I was digging and building into my collections, I found a set of uh, cigarette silks were also available from the same, uh, the same supplier. It looks just like, and it is basically the size of the cigarette card, but if you look really closely, you can see there's some fraying on the edges. You can see some thread coming off the top. So this is actually fabric. And so what she had mentioned, what Joni had mentioned in the deep dive was you could actually collect these as well. And you could sew them into like, sew them together into a quilt, you know, crazy quilts would have little pieces of this in there, into a handkerchief, whatever you want, because although it's, it's rigid, it basically is a piece of fabric uh, that was then also made available. So I was happy to pick those up as well. So that's it. That's all I really wanted to showcase uh, in this little video. I probably got longer than I meant it to, but you know, if, you, if you've been to my channels before, you know I'm a talker. So, uh, I, but I hope you found it interesting because the, again, these are items that I'm actually keeping in my personal collection. I love 90% of what I buy to resell. I typically won't buy it if I don't also enjoy it to some extent. But I am always, you know, those in those cases, I know I'm not going to keep it. So I don't get an emotional attachment to them. I just bring them in, you know, take photographs, put them on Etsy, put it in my live sale. And they, you know, I know it's going to go back out the door. These are items that are going to go into my personal collection. You know, the cards, I bought a special, a special size binder for the cigarette cards to fit into. So that actually sits on my coffee table. So when I have guests over, you know, if they are so inclined, they can flip through those because I think it is an interesting collection. Uh, the Wittenberg, uh, that is a collection that part of it um, decorates my wall. So I, you know, kind of rotate some things in to figure out how to, you know, display that collection. So these are things that are personal to me and I wanted to be able to share with you. So I appreciate you giving me your time. Uh, if you've gotten this far watching the video and you're not already a subscriber, I thank you very much for your dedication. But I would also thank you if you would go ahead and become a subscriber and maybe give a little thumbs up to the video. Believe it or not, it does have an impact on other people finding my video and particularly during our current uh, situation of lockdowns, I definitely am interested in uh, doing a little bit more with YouTube and I want more people to find it and get some idea of what people like, what they don't like, and what type of content that I should put out. Uh, but for now, this is it. I'm going to be signing off. Thank you again so much for your time. Thank you for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster and I hope to talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Well, show me a sign if you're wishing me to stay. Otherwise, I say goodbye and finish out the day. And that sunrise in the morning, and you got nothing to say. Oh, that's when I'll be headed on my way.